I saw episode five of The Wheel of Time season two, and wow, there's a lot to talk about. Let's get right into it. Spoiler warning, this is going to have heavy spoilers, heavy Wheel of Time book spoilers. I'm not necessarily going to talk about all of the Wheel of Time books, but if you haven't read all the books, this video probably isn't for you. If you're worried about spoilers, watch my Unraveled videos instead. If you watch my recent review about episode four, you know that uh, I had some concerns. I liked it overall, but I wish that they had focused a little bit more on the main characters. But I was hopeful that they were setting things up. Boy, oh boy, did they set things up. This episode five was just packed with action. I was on the edge of my seat every moment. I just love this episode. So let's get into it. First, the good. That cold open with the Shan Chan, I just loved every second of it. They got Pat and Fane in there. They got the Horn of Valir. They got High Lord Turok uh, with High Lady Suroth, or is she just Lady Suroth? I don't know. They call her High Lady Suroth at times, but I think maybe she's been demoted. Also, she didn't have her full head shaved, so I'm not entirely sure what's going on with her, but I liked it. She did have a little bit of a big head, but it's OK. I love that little moment when Ingtar and Loyal notice Pat and Fane in the horn and they kind of give each other that look. That was so perfect. Dane Bornhold. Once again, the show has taken characters that are not likable in the books and made me like them. And I cannot believe how much I like Dane Bornhold. The setup with Perrin, the Aiel, obviously Avienda. Wow. Just all of that was so good. The way that Dane was kind of at odds with Eamon Valda. Eamon Valda had that injury from season one, like oh, the, the shepherd's crook looking thing on Eamon Valda's cloak. Everything was just amazing with the white cloaks. And I love that setup. And the fact that Perrin kind of saved Dane's life because Dane helped Avienda. I love that so much. I mean, the best character of this episode by far was Lady, that dog that walked up to Perrin and kind of warned him that the white cloaks were there. That was such a sweet moment seeing that little dog paw on Perrin. I love that so much. Even the Anver Barthanis de Modred stuff, I really liked. I liked Moraine's interactions with them. I liked all of that very much. And then you have Leandrin and the girls. And the way Leandrin kind of freed the girls right as she was leaving into the Waygate, that moment between Leandrin and Suroth, which is like straight out of the books, like, oh, man, I can't gush enough how much I like this episode. It just really kept the pace moving. They introduced a lot of interesting new terms, but I do have some gripes. Before we get into the bad, let me just quickly say these videos where I sit here in front of the camera, they're not my best videos. This is not what I like to do. I have high quality, in-depth videos where I unravel each episode. I discuss different terms. I help explain things for fans. I have maps. I show details that other people don't pick up on. Easter eggs, lore, all of that. Those are the videos that I love to make. Those are the videos that are kind of like the meat and potatoes of my channel. And they don't get as many views because they take me a long time to make. And by the time I get them out, you know, the new next episodes out and people want to talk about that. So these reviews and reactions that I do tend to get more views, but these aren't my good videos. So I would just ask that you please go and check out my unraveled videos. As of right now, I only have two out episodes one and two, and I've decided for now I'm going to release my episode five unraveled video next. I will get to episodes three and four, but I want to kind of stay relevant with the show as it's releasing episodes. So I'm a little behind because things have been getting busy with work, but I'll just say my episodes three and four Unraveled videos are coming out and hopefully soon all of my Unraveled videos should be out, you know, within a week after the finale of season two. But I just I want to be more relevant. So I'm going to release episode five Unraveled, hopefully in the coming days. Then hopefully before episode six, I'll get maybe episode three Unraveled mostly finished or finished. By the time episode eight comes out, I should be caught up and I should have my episode eight Unraveled video out within a week or so of that final episode coming out. So check the description Look at my playlists on my channel. Watch my other videos. I'd really appreciate it. Also, please like this video. Subscribe to Unraveling the Pattern. And let's get back into it. The bad. This episode didn't have a lot of bad, but I do have a few nitpicks. I wouldn't say anything in this episode stood out as super bad to me. I really liked the episode, if that wasn't obvious by how excited I am. But I do have to say there were some things that kind of bothered me. You know, High Lady Suroth's big head with the sort of bald cap was a little weird. I do think it probably would have been better if she had a little bit more of a mohawk and her hair wasn't so far back. But, you know, it's OK. I don't want to be rude or unkind to any specific actor. But I do have to say, I originally thought that Karima McAdams, the actress who plays High Lady Suroth, was possibly going to be Lanfear. And I'm so glad I was wrong about that. Natasha O'Keefe, she is perfect as Lanfear. And... I liked Karima McAdams as High Lady Suroth, but there were a few moments where I felt like her line deliveries were a little odd. And again, High Lady Suroth was an interesting character and I'm still excited to see more, but that was a bit of a weakness for me in the episode. Okay, minor nitpicks. 
they say the dark a lot instead of the shadow. Now, they do say the shadow a couple times in the show, too. But this idea that it's like they're going to turn to the dark, it feels a little too Star Wars for me. And it's not a big deal. It's definitely not a deal breaker. But it is something that I noticed. They just say the dark a little too much. Just say the shadow. It's OK to say the shadow. Another super minor nitpick is whenever they mention the Empress of the Shan Chan, they never say may she live forever. Another minor nitpick, Lanfear on a horse. Like, I know they probably don't want to introduce traveling just yet, but it was a little odd to me that Lanfear got on a horse. I do like that she said something like, could there be anything slower than a horse? I thought that was kind of funny. The way Moraine just casually mentions Teleron Riyadh as she's walking down the road with Rand and he's like, Tella what now? I thought that was a little odd. Like, I'm sure that we'll get more into that and explain it more. The World of Dream stuff overall in the episode was good, and I'm glad that they introduced it. And I'm glad that they talked more about it and that there's some lore related to that introduced. But... I always feel like the show doesn't do enough to explain things. So I hope that there's more explanation related to that. Now, the way the episode ended, it does feel like there probably is going to be more explanation of that. So I'm looking forward to that. And why did Moraine have to kill that poor, innocent horse? And once again, they refer to Luce Theron as the Dragon Reborn. One of my biggest problems with the show so far is that they call Luce Theron the Dragon Reborn. I think that's just confusing. It muddles things. It confuses new watchers. I understand why they do it. I think they're trying to make things simpler. But I don't love that. I wish that they would just stick to calling him the dragon and Rand is the dragon reborn. Oh, and although what a great episode. Let's get into the great and the surprising. I mean, we definitely got the true power right now. I'm not talking about the one power. I'm talking about the true power. At the end of episode four, there was some speculation about whether or not we were seeing the Sa'a in Lanfear's eyes. We were definitely seeing the saw in Lanfear's eyes. I still haven't seen it in Ishamayel's eyes, but I definitely saw it in Lanfear's. And then there was that blackness that came around her. Interesting that it didn't just heal Lanfear, but it actually like fixed her clothing too. Like, is she wearing the Mask of Mirrors? Is something weird going on with Lanfear? Still not sure. I actually really want her to just be Natasha O'Keefe. Speaking of Lanfear, one of the things that I talked about in season one was that I wanted the Forsaken to be more scary and Boy, did we get that. I was terrified of Lanfear this entire episode. The idea that she could just pop up at any moment and explode your head terrified me and I loved it. And I actually compared my hope for the Forsaken to characters in the show The Boys and how whenever like Homelander is on screen, he's sort of terrifying. You don't know what he's going to do. He's unpredictable. And I feel like they totally nailed that. There's a different scariness to Ishamael. He's a little bit more calculated, but Lanfear, she's like unpredictable and scary. And I really like that. Speaking of things that I absolutely love that I was surprised by is the fact that they mention other Forsaken and they had a little meeting in the world of dreams. I mean, how cool was that? Like all of that is just stuff that I have wanted to see forever. And even though these scenes weren't directly from the books, this is what I wanted. There was an article recently that came out that says something to the effect of the Wheel of Time is doing adaptation right. And I know there's been a lot of discussion and argument about that. Some people want it to be more like the books. I have to say season two as different as it is from the books, it's really doing it right, I think. It's a great adaptation. It's exciting. It's still putting the characters where they need to be for the full story. There's a lot of important setup that's happening. We know season three is going to be more in line with the books. I think this is a great way to do it. Introducing the Forsaken in the way that they're doing, different from the books, better, in my opinion. There are some things that are genuinely better, and I've said this before. It's not better than the books overall. But there are some things, especially for a viewing audience as an adaptation, that I'm very happy that they've been doing. That little moment with Sheriam and Varen and the idea that there was some compulsion being had was so well handled. It was so interesting. And I legit thought that Sheriam was lying and that we caught her in a lie. And then they revealed that, no, maybe there's compulsion. That was super cool. And what a great way to introduce the idea of compulsion. And then Lanfear kind of reinforces it and talks about compulsion later. I think that's super great. This is one of the things that I was most happy with in this episode. They talked about things from the books. They said words that were new terms that I was so excited to hear. They finally said Black Aja. They finally said Compulsion. They finally said Teleron Riyadh, Suldam, Marath Damane, Karakarn, Jia To, Threefold Land. Ishamayel even says Great Lord when he's talking about the Dark One. I just love that they were embracing these terms from the books. They even mentioned the Empress, May She Live Forever, and her Court of the Nine Moons. I mean, just... What a great episode. Perfect setup, super action packed, super exciting. I didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, that ending, uh, just all of it was great. Obviously, I'm excited. I'm going to be releasing my episode five unraveled video hopefully soon. Thanks, you guys, for watching. Until next time, let the dragon ride again on the winds of Prime.